Hi, everyone. August 6, 2021. Well, I'm going to be posting this video and then another video, and then I got to shift gears. I am, I think I'm coming to an end. Ah, yes. Little tidbits that I've been saying in videos. But I'll post a video on the bigger tidbit. But just to let you know, I don't like the fact, oh boy, there is so much destruction going on. Another town burned down, Canyon Dam, Canyon Dam, another town. This Dixie fire, it's going towards two more towns as I speak. The Dixie fire is destroying everything in its path in Northern California. The small community of Canyon Dam was swallowed by flames Thursday. Wind pushing the fire up dry timber as 5,000 firefighters tried to control the blaze. I've been fighting fire for almost 25 years and this is the most extreme fire behavior that I've ever been a part of. Dixie fire is one of the largest in California's history, burning more than 500 square miles. That's an area bigger than Los Angeles. I just can't see it, you know, not being here. <laughs> the town of Chester is fully evacuated with the fire approaching. 2,000 residents know they may never see their homes again, including mother of three, Dawn Rocha, who packed up what she could and left. We'll be okay. They'll get new toys and everything, uh, but it's just memories. Not far away in Greenville, residents are seeing Dixie's destruction. The historic mountain town reduced to ashes. Businesses, the library, the post office, and over 100 homes burned to the ground. There's no reason for us to lose our town. Rhonda Reams evacuated Greenville with her partner and her dog. They have no home to return to. We stood up outside of the property yesterday and watched the trees go up. As wildfires rage up and down the state, officials say too many are refusing to evacuate. We have firefighters are getting guns pulled out on them uh, because people don't want to evacuate. Tensions high as the danger grows. Oh boy, okay. I was thinking about this takedown of the town of Greenville. Didn't it happen in less than 24 hours? If you know, please leave a comment below. It's kind of like paradise. Well, paradise was, is truly the exception in terms of the amount of homes literally brought to dust in 24 hours. Well, they're taking out towns. They're literally taking out. So this Dixie fire is still not under control. For all I know, it may be it may be burning down Chester. The comment that I received from I didn't recognize the name, so either a subscriber or a viewer who said that she was running from Colfax, 100 homes in Colfax burned down. And I haven't heard from her since. Oh, shit, man. This is... We somehow have to pull it together and really just help one another. If you have property, please allow people to just camp on your property if you have camping equipment that you can give to others, just do everything that you can because, wow, once again, there's a lot of people without anything. And there, these towns, all right, so Greenville Fire, uh, they were evacuated and then allowed back, and then... They had to immediately escape the flames again. So, you're evacuated once, you have some time, you pack up your car or whatever, you know, with your whatever it is that is really important to you, and then you're allowed back, and then you have no time to leave. Even if these fires were not 
directed energy weapons were not the plasma coming from underground, were the spraying, the geoengineering, the spraying of incendiary substances, making these fires uncontrollable, very hot. It's still... It, it does come down to man causing these fires. But when I say man, I don't mean, you know, the, uh, the person who's driving in a car and suddenly hits, you know, uh, the side of a road and sparks fly. I'm talking about what man has done to this environment. Those who have been geoengineering the planet. Look at all of the fires in Europe, but the planet the world, the spraying that every single year it just, they sprayed more and more. Every single year it became more and more obvious. So yeah, man, man is responsible for this. Not in the climate change way. Can't believe it. This is from our photographer at the Dixie Fire. It has been burning ferociously overnight in downtown Greenville in Plumas County. This is a video I'm seeing for the first time as well this morning. Such destruction, homes, businesses completely burning to the ground. Everything people own just going up in flames. These scenes eerily reminiscent of recent fires that we've experienced here, like in the North Bay. And firefighters are doing their best to just try to contain these hot spots. A lot to take in as you're waking up this morning, but so important because this fire actually just took a turn for the worse. Greenville population is only about 1,100 people, and it is charred. The Dixie Fire is already considered to be the eighth largest fire in California state history. And now an entire town is gone, reduced to ashes. And firefighters spent yesterday pitching a last ditch effort to save Greenville. But bone and dry conditions took a turn for the worse when those winds started surging up to 40 miles per hour. Now thousands of those homes still threatened. Since the fire broke out in mid-July, at least 67 homes and buildings are confirmed to have burned. This is before last night's firestorm. The Dixie Fire still listed at 35% contained. In the meantime, 2,400 additional people out of their homes from the River of Fire. It's burning about 150 miles south of Greenville in Placer and Nevada counties near Colfax. At least 35 structures have been destroyed since that fire started yesterday. No, more. More structures. I heard 100. But maybe that was including green. I don't know. But a lot. And even if one burned down, well, neighbors hopefully would help that person. But this is so unbelievable what we are living. Canyon Dam destroys another town. Homes, businesses lost. Look at this picture. You know, I see it so often that it's only the homes and cars. And I'm not saying that that's the entire, you know, uh, fire. But you come across these and you're like, okay, where did the fire come from? Where did the fire come from? It literally uh, leveled whatever that structure was. But... It certainly didn't come from this area, right? Because if it did, it would have gotten these trees. And there's so much evidence that... And I've come across it. And you know what? I, I, I can't... I don't like the fact that I've been so brought down. I'm pissed. Listen to what this reporter said fire has been really interesting because it's been it's popped up in different parts of the area it isn't all just one neighborhood that was taken down we're seeing homes pop up homes that were lost in one neighborhood but homes right next door that are totally fine um you can see active flames burning on this home right behind us that's believed to be a gas line that was still left on 
This is one home again. We are somewhere along Mountain Line Way in the Colfax area. Again, we're bringing you an update on the river fire right now. For those just tuning into this, this is a fire that is 2,400 acres right now. Cal Fire officials say they believe this to be, they believe at least 50 structures were destroyed or... Okay, that this broadcast is over 24 hours old. But isn't it interesting? She said, but this fire is interesting how, you know, it's taking out this neighborhood, but this neighborhood's fine. This house is burned, but that house is not. Look at all of the trees. <sighs> Nuclear bomb just went off. About five o'clock, the flames were coming out of the canyon, and you could hear the propane tanks blowing up from the houses down below. And uh, basically, it just started shooting through here and missed part of Mount Olive. I mean, uh, everything on the north side is okay, but south side is looks like it worked its way through. But yeah, I just tried to bunker down and keep everything wet. But when the wind was blowing, it was it's, the fire was grabbing so much wind, it was just pulling it this way. Ran my generator, turned my well back on, and ran the water everywhere. So, watered the roof down, and that was pretty much it. Sat it out. Watered the roof down, and... The plastic lining, the, the, the pool, but the plastic lining, really? And this is completely fine, this... You know, it looks like a cloth covering, maybe a tarp. How does that happen? People need to start asking questions. They really do. They really do. <laughs> but thank God they got a lot of this out. It's a nuclear bomb just went off. I mean, that's what it felt like, you know. You know, we had a plan. We have We had things packed up for... A year and a half you know all of our important papers and everything has, has been in a duffel bag for a year and a half and we knew this time was coming it wasn't a matter of if it was when so wasn't a matter of if but when okay a year and a half ready to go ready to flee a fire it doesn't appear that people want to understand what's happening they're so unbelievably indoctrinated. And that indoctrination closes the mind to new information. Well, <laughs> what is this? Wildfire blazes, forcing more evacuations, more evacuations. Here, 75 billions in buildings in Colfax uh, destroyed. And I just saw a news article. It's 100. Now, Cecilia, to the wildfire crisis in the West. That Dixie fire engulfing an area larger than the size of Los Angeles. Flames are raging through California right now. And our Will Carr is live on the ground in Grass Valley, California. Good morning to you, Will. And good morning, TJ. We are hearing terrifying stories of residents who tried to stick it out here as the flames raced towards this community. They picked up hoses, they sprayed down their properties, but in the end, this fire was just too much, destroying at least 20 homes across this area. Thousands of people are still evacuated as these fires continue to scorch the West Coast. Okay, these homes were there yesterday. These towns the, at Colfax only had... Um, only. Some homes burned down. How does this happen so fast that everything is gone but this chimney and a few other pieces? Forest fires do not do this. So something else is contributing to this. That needs to be questioned. 
This morning, raging fires ripping through California. Flames forcing thousands to evacuate. The river fire pushed by dangerous winds and fueled by bone-dry brush sweeping through two counties in Northern California. 50 years of stuff is, is gone. The flames and wind forming this smoke nado and taking aim at the town of Colfax, over 75 buildings destroyed there. This fire burned through here so fast and so hot and incinerated cars, burned homes, it's in residence here flame. This woman getting to her parents' home just minutes before their house caught fire. I got him out of there and we had to run. And I have never seen a firestorm this bad. The Dixie Fire in Northern California turning skies red in Lassen County and Susanville. This after the fire demolished the town of Greenville. It just got, like this thing goes, all hell broke loose. The fire has burned for more than three weeks, engulfing an area the size of Los Angeles. Residents in Chester now fleeing their homes as the flames approach. It's devastating. It's really my first home. We took a load of stuff, so this is just sentimental. With more than 88% of California experiencing extreme drought, wildfires have ravaged the state, burning more than 656,000 acres so far. The extreme conditions leading to Lake Oroville's lowest water level since September 1977. Hyatt Power Plant, which relies on the lake now, will go offline for the first time in its history, leading to the fear of potential power outages. <clears throat> Wasn't it last year? Was it last year? Uh, maybe, you know, the first half of last year that everybody was concerned that Lake Oroville was going to overflow and flood out Oroville and the, the surrounding communities. Now, it's whoa. Well, whoa, yeah. Okay, this is true for many of your lakes. California shuts down major hydroelectric plant amid record low water levels at Lake Oroville. Loss of power could fuel rolling blackouts as the state struggles with a historic drought and record-breaking heat waves. Well, everybody needs to check out the technology that man has to create heat waves I have videos on my playlist, weather modification, historic drought, doesn't need to be. You can get rid of that historic drought if you stopped, you know, um, the weather modification. Hell, you're like Texas, okay? There are so many of your counties that hire weather modifiers. You know, look at Sacramento. Look at, there's so, I, you know, people just don't want to know, I guess. They just don't want to know. Unprecedented impacts. Well, they can make rain. They could stop, you know, using their electromagnetic frequencies to keep all of the clouds away. Mainstream media even reports on weather modification so they're, they're, I'm sorry, it's like their brains, most people's brains have just been rotted. But they don't want to unrot them, so they don't want to heal. There's going, California, I'd say California of all of our states is certainly the most hit, you know, to devastate it. I, I'm, I'm so sorry for you guys, but sorry for everybody in the world right now. Starving cows, fallow farms, the Arizona drought is among the worst in the country. Oh, okay. The cotton's gone. The alfalfa barely exists. Can you even call this a farm? Nancy Kaywood, on a rural stretch of land her Texas grandfather settled nearly a century ago. Wow. Yep. Oh, there are pictures and I can't show them because I can't even look at the cows that are rather emaciated. 
So BC, where this is Greece. Actually, I can't show this video. I'll link to it. You want to watch it. Graphic content. <sighs> BC. I got a comment from someone who said that, and I looked again for the comment because I couldn't remember the particulars, but I think this is someone from Monte County or uh, not entirely sure, but that town is getting hit. Well, you're looking at British Columbia's top firefighting priority right now, an aggressive wildfire that's burning between Kamloops and Vernon. Now, some evacuees say they watched their homes go up in flames as they tried to escape. Officials now say the next 48 hours will be crucial as strong winds push the fire even faster towards residential areas. Well, for more, let's get to Laura McQuillan, who's on the story for us today. So, Laura, walk us through the latest right now. Yeah, Michael, this is the White Rock Lake fire, and locals in the area told us that they have been watching this for weeks now, but they were still far, uh, surprised at how fast it moved just yesterday, jumping a highway. These new evacuation orders list, uh, issued last night for more than 700 properties, and that's on top of hundreds of already evacuated, thousands of others already on standby as well, some 5,000 on standby. And in terms of what they are leaving behind, well, that's the big question as they wake up this morning. How many of their homes are still standing? We spoke with Steph Gamash, and she lives in Monty Lake, which is just north of where this fire is burning. This is some of the footage that she sent in to us, what she was seeing from where she was. And she told us that her home is gone and that the area is nearly wiped out. My place was on fire when I left, um, including every other house along the stretch. It's, it's, it's completely gone. It's, uh, yeah, it's tearing off up the packs and on the other side of the highway now. The cattle are still up on that mountain. The ranchers didn't even have time to get them out. Monty Lake, the town, probably doesn't exist anymore just horrifying yes it is horrifying yes it really is all right oh man i just i don't even know what to say anymore i am so sorry to all affected by fires and floods all over the world not just americans um it is so friggin heartbreaking gut-wrenching to watch this to see it and you got to know, you know, I mean, I've posted videos on flooding in certain areas, fires in certain areas, and I'll get comments from people in those areas that they didn't even know that it was taking place. So if you don't know, then how can you be of help? But if you do know and you're in these areas, please extend yourself, extend yourself to those in need because... The way we're going, eventually, you'll be in need, and you will be very grateful for all of those who extend themselves to you.